so a game that I played, I was going to bore you guys to tears with Chrono Cross. Uh, bore a us, complica- dude. A complicated, uh, absurd, almost anime-ish game. No, I don't like that anime. Um, but then I saw another game on Saturday night, and I realized I had to talk about this one. So I'm going to go with the other one. What is it? It's a game called Katamari Domasi. Ooh, cool. Damasi. Damasi. There it is. So hard to pronounce the game. You know, those Japanese, the way they speak is so weird. It's difficult for me. You know how to say it, Teddy? Katamari Damashi. But it's not spelled like the way it should be pronounced in Japanese, so I understand why. It's it's kind of hard to pronounce that one. Yeah. Um, Katamari Damashi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly now, now that I'm educated, is a, a really, really, really unique game that came out on the PlayStation 2 in 2004. Uh, I got I played the re-roll edition, which is on the Switch, and I believe PC. I don't know if it came out on anything else. I just know it came out on those. And it is a game where you play as the prince in this little green suit. And uh, your, your king, the king of all cosmos, uh, screwed up royally, pun intended, and removed all the stars from the sky. Oh, shit. Really? All the lights from the sky, because the moon's in there, too. Um... And it's your job to fill it back up. But How do you do that? The way you do it is by going to Earth and rolling shit up in a ball and throwing it into the sky. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> I mean, obviously. Uh, it is the one of the most interesting games, if you're talking about it to people that don't play video games or have any knowledge of what you're talking about. It, it defies any video game that they've ever heard of, ever. <laughs> and I've always wanted to play this game, but I've never had the chance. Oh, you should totally play it. It's on sale right now for like 18 I should, bucks. I should get it on Switch. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's very short. It'll probably last you four to five hours. But maybe that's a good thing in today's market. I don't know. Nothing wrong with short games. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's... Now, this is a re-roll edition, so I guess it's, like, remastered, but it doesn't look it. It looks pretty much as I remember it on the PS2, which looks fine. It's very, very low re- low polygon count, but it makes it fun because everything looks really simple, and it looks nice when it's all collected in one big ball. Uh, it's, it's great. You start out as, like, the size of a thumbtack, and uh, by the end of a level, you might be the size of a small dog or a garbage can. Uh, and of course, you know, as you progress throughout the game, your your ball becomes so big that you're plucking up islands, Godzilla, clouds from the <laughs> sky. It is quite the journey, and uh, it almost feels like, and I'm a big RPG guy, it almost feels like an RPG played out over like five minutes <laughs> or 12 minutes. Because your growth is like one minute you're you're struggling because a cat keeps knocking you over, and literally a minute later you're grabbing that cat and plucking it in, <laughs> out of the air, and you're... He's like tails wiggling in the air, and it's just wonderful. Um, I t- totally recommend it to anybody. What was, uh, you know, here on the button mappers, we like to look at the map of things, right? Sure. What was like the stage that really, you know, hit home for you? Because I feel like this is a game where, you know, environment is key. Yeah. Was there anyone that you rolled through that you found like, oh my gosh, what am I doing right now? <laughs> Well, what's kind of interesting about the game is that it actually shares basically the same environment throughout the entire game. It's just that your scale becomes bigger and bigger and bigger with every level. Um, the the one the second to last level really clicked with me. One because of the music. I don't remember if the music is specific to each level, um, but the song that was playing when I was doing the second to last level, official level. There's little side levels, but I don't count those. Um, it. It really resonated because it really took you from being really, really small to really, really big. I was almost able to pluck out islands and everything. Um, and there's there's just a certain sense of achievement in, in seeing something in the distance and being like, whoa, that's huge. I'll never be able to, to roll that up. And then like 10 minutes later after you've rolled up the world, you just stare at it and you're like, I'm going to get that that maybe it was a guy that knocked you over or something you pluck him out and that's the one where you really see it and then obviously the last one is a continuation of that but but when once you really tackle something large 
that game really shines. Now, what, like, what I'm trying to think, because, like, it sounds like you just do the same thing for each level, right? You just, you know, you just collect things. Does it get yeah. monotonous? Does it get old? No, no. And one thing is that, it, again, it's a pretty quick game. This game knows what it is. It gets in, gets out. You know, you're done quickly. Um, you, the, the things you can collect, there's thousands upon thousands of different things. And some of them make noises when you pick them up. They go like, Rah! or something. And they'll wiggle around. The things you can pick up are so can be so, um, like, you wouldn't, like, it's a, a fire pit. And there's an actual fire, but it just, you pick it up and it's just with you. It like doesn't make any sense, but it's just funny that you can pick it up. Um, so no, I don't think it gets boring, but also again, because it's very brisk and just kind of sprints to the end, which I appreciate as somebody who doesn't do side content in any games, listening to you guys talk about Super Mario Odyssey. I was like, oh my God, (laughs) I ran through that game. Like, like there was a fire behind me. Um, (laughs) One one maybe problem with the game that that newcomers might have is the controls. Uh, it uses a two joystick system that can be a little bit difficult to get the hang of. But honestly, one I think once you get the hang of it, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, but I could see people that are not as open minded having a real problem with the with going left and right because you're controlling a ball, but you it's weird to use two two sticks to control it. But. That game's always had funky controls, though. I do remember the PS2 version being a little clunky, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've never played it. This has always been one of those games that, like, I've always, like, heard people talk about, like, oh, wacky PS2 game. It's, you know, Japanese and stuff. But I've never actually played it. Yeah, I see so much wacky crap. And I'm like, oh, that's just goofy, whatever. But this one is, like, legitimately good. Is it funny? It's... It's got like a really dry Japanese sense of humor. Okay. Like it's definitely like an adult swimmy kind uh, of. Oh, okay. Like, humor. Adult, like yeah. Where the, where the characters are they don't show like almost any emotion and they just kind of talk and they'll say some goofy things but it's like the opposite of an anime where they're like screaming and their eyes are bulging out of their heads. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on on a scale from Clue Clue Land to 10, what would you grade this? Well, is that like a 9 versus a 10? I don't understand. Your Clue Clue Land is a zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a scale of Clue Clue Land to ten, um, I give it a Guitaru Man. Ooh, wow. yeah. You know what? It, it's it does seem like it has the same like humor. You know. Yeah, and I will say in some ways, maybe maybe I'm overstepping it. Maybe I'm overthinking this game, but it's possible that this game is really shooting for something a little bit more spiritual. Uh, you can totally tell that it, it gives you this empowerment. And uh, you start off small, and the goal is to always think bigger. You could look at that from a spiritual perspective. You could look at it from a financial perspective or just a personal growth perspective. But either way you look at it, 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 it encourages you to grow and to think big and that your dreams, no matter how far away or how vast, are always attainable beautiful fucking beautiful dude jesus that was i, can't I almost cried off. there it's also got a there. bitchin' soundtrack you should hear it some of the some of the tracks are pretty <laughs> awesome it. can you sing us one no 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 Na 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 na. Just like rolling out in the field, rolling all the players. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do do that at, at one point. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for sharing, man. Uh, you got anything else You're you want to say about 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 Kiritomori Damashi? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you put it that way, I guess we'll move on. <laughs> Bon 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 b